Good evening, beautiful people. My name is Derek Standerford, and I have the high honor, the privilege, and the pleasure of interviewing a woman of high esteem, the leader of the College of Education at the Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. We have Dr. Allison Watson, Dean of College of Education. Dr. Watson, first of all, thank you for agreeing to do the interview. Um, hey. under, the, under the circumstances that you are doing the interview, and two, how are you, good ma'am? I am doing great. I'm happy to be here with you, Derek, because you represent the best college at the Hill, Florida A&M University, the College of Education. You are in our educational leadership PhD program and it's bright stars like you that make me happy to do the work that I do every day. So mm -hmm. thank I'm you for having me. I'm humbled. I received the words of, 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 of praise and uh, I will continue to try to make you proud and carry this torch and keep it burning bright. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So for here on Solving Sundays, what we do, we we take some about doers, movers and shakers in the community and we juxtapose um, solving the twists and turns of the Rubik's Cube to solving the twists and turns of your life, your career and your success. So um, a lot of people are, are in, highly interested in, in knowing your, your your story, knowing how you got to be Dean. Um, a, a lot of personal friends, they want to be Dean. So they're tuning in to um, get some awesome. brains a little bit. So um, the first step of solving the Rubik's Cube, the first step of solving life is to believe. Now, believing, um, believing in yourself is the gas that gets the car going. You can't accomplish your goals without believing that you can accomplish your goals. That's and right. You have embarked on this uh, role of becoming the dean of college of education. So what made you believe that you can that you can successfully uh, honor this role, good man? Let me just say that I overall in life have been pretty confident as a person. Um, I tell my kids the story about when I was bullied, um, probably at around fifth grade, and I was super tall, and I wore a size 11 shoe, and my mom had a, um, a green car. So when I got out the car in front of the school, um, there was this one <laughs> guy, and he would have everyone say, ho, 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 green giant. And that was because I was tall, and my mom's car was green. And so I say that to say, I have always had an internal confidence and a belief that no matter what, I was going to accomplish my goals. So I believed in myself from day one, but it was actually stepping foot on Bethune-Cookman College's campus in probably 1992, 1993, when I was about to graduate from, from high school. And I saw the way that the president at the time interacted with students. And I learned about the legacy of Mary McLeod Bethune from a very young age. And that's when I started believing that I could do something in higher education. And that really gave me um, the push and the, the vision to accomplish what I am doing today. And so when I was a senior in college, I wrote in my senior paper that one day I would either become the U.S. Department of Education secretary or um, a college or university president. And I said, the reason for that was not only the belief in myself, but the belief in our community, in the African-American community, the Latina community, um, minority communities, that a leader could truly be in front of um, individuals leading with them to bring forth a change. And so that's how my trajectory kind of started. And um, it's been a dream ever since. And you're on the path. That's amazing. Uh, well, one, you know, we were part of the inauguration class for you, to, uh, the cohort 2018. And I can say it's been a true honor to, to call you a leader uh, of the College of Education. You've um, uh, you've offered so many resources personally to me. Um, we've attended a, a workshop two weeks ago that you that you reached out and, and offered to us. Um, it's just a lot of opportunities that have been coming our way since I've been a part of College of Education. And I humbly thank you. Thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you, Derek. We have a cohort member, also a cohort member of 2018, Ms. Gian Jones. She says, greetings, Dr. Watson. Hi, future Dr. Jones and future <laughs> Dr. Sandifer. We, I'm so excited. Listen, being at FAMU um, gives me so much life. I love my colleagues. I love the students. I really love the um, impetus for which FAMU was even founded in 1887. Um, mm -hmm. And a little known fact, I share it sometimes, but I applied for FAMU to be one of my top three choices for um, going to college. And I received the admission letter there first, but where I chose offered me a tad bit more scholarship money. So I just say it all. I was born to be a Rattler someday, some way. And now I'm here on the Hill with you all. 
Welcome to the hill. Welcome to the hill. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So solving of the cross, you see, we have the, uh, the, the the cross resembles a plus sign. And these this plus sign will keep you charged up in this journey called life. And this is not actually step number two of solving the Rubik's Cube and of solving life, um, which is to solve your cross. Now, solving your cross is to identify your why, your reasons, um, what motivates you, what pushes you, what inspires you. So um, any of those, any combinations of those questions. So what motivates you to serve and to carry the torch that you choose to carry, Dr. Watson? Oh, thank you for that. I think that um, people are, are born leaders in many cases, and you can also learn to be leaders. My why and my cross um, builds a lot on my faith in God and um, just keeping that first and foremost and knowing that anytime that I can impact people and make them their day feel better or um, put a some type of opportunity in their hands that they didn't have before they met me. Uh, that's my why. But I will tell you, I come from a legacy of servant leaders, um, a whole rich um, culture of just servanthood and people that want to see others do better and do well. And so that's my why. Um, at any time that I come into contact with you, I always think there's a purpose for it. Um, and I always say, you know, what is the purpose and how can I add to your life? I always talk about in the College of Education, adding value to others. How are we adding value through our programs, through our principles, through our pedagogy? How are we adding value to every student that comes in contact with the College of Education and those that have gone on to graduate? Um, and so that is part of my why. The other is that before all else, um, I'm a woman, I'm a wife, I'm a mother. And so my family inspires me to continue to push forward, continue to do better and be greater. Um, and not only, it's really never, ever been about the title. It's always been about um, really how we can work collaboratively and collectively to build our community up. So my why is really centered around people. Um, I love people. I'm an extrovert. I get energy from others. So when I see that maybe you haven't had a good day, but we have this conversation and then you feel better about yourself and have laser like focus on why you're here and what your purpose is, then that um, begins my cross. That's my why. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I can attest to uh, everything that she's saying is, is, is absolutely true. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Packer, she's tuned in. And she says, I oh, love Dr. Dr. Packer, award winning teacher of the year at mm -hmm. FAMU. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And that's the point that I was, I was going to hit to that. She, uh, Dr. Packer just won uh, FAMU teacher of the year 2020, 2021. And um, Dr. Watson came to FAMU only 18 months ago, hit the ground running, and she's already a part of this FAMU league. People love her. People respect her. Um, and look, she took out the time to spend her evening, a Sunday evening, with one of her, with one of her students. Um, and these are the moments right here that shows the true leadership. Um, and I'm so grateful for your leadership, for you to take Thank time you. out of your Sunday. I'm not going to put your business out there, considering the circumstances. Okay. Um, of, of of the event that took that has taken place, and it's a you know when people serve in the way that you serve, your students want to make you proud. Your students want to make you proud. So uh, thank you for that, Dr. Watson. You thank do you. make me proud. I'm telling you, every time there's an award that comes up, um, the thing that I love about FAMU is actually that I can go down a list in my head of students like you, Derek. Um, who I can call their names and I have connected with them and I see their future. I see their future is bright and I can say, oh, she would be wonderful at this award. He would be absolutely wonderful at this opportunity. And that's what I love about being at an HBCU and specifically being at um, FAMU. We have long known the history and trajectory of HBCUs. We know the grounds upon which they were founded. People are just now finding out um, the shine, you know, they've always known that we've been there, but um, we have some really big star power lately, but we are doing magnificent things that started from the premise of how we began, but have even um, cultivated more excellence. And that's what it's all about, cultivating excellence in others. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Watson, um, so... After, after, after we solve our cross, after we believe in ourselves, step number three of solving the Rubik's Cube, step number three of solving life is to fill in your corners. 
Now, filling in your corners means to say immerse yourself in an environment that promotes growth and prosperity. Um, you are an average of the people that you surround yourself with. So you want to be conscious of who you include in your circle. So in order for you to lead at the level at which you lead, you must have a, an amazing circle that builds you up and supports you and pours into you. So what kind of what kind of circle, what kind of circle are you involved in that allows you to grow and prosper and become the person that you are? That's a good question, Derek, because I think that nationally I can call on friends from all different parts of the United States, um, from different backgrounds, different um, professional circles. Uh, but the older you get, the smaller your closer circle becomes. And I can say that those who are around me um, motivate one another, uh, push each other to um, do better, congratulate each other when when something is happening well, and then provide a shoulder to lean on when you need that um, someone to just um, say, hey, I'm having a bad day. Um, but the circle is really surrounding yourself with people that are um, like-minded uh, in terms of their intellectual impact. Why did you, why were you born on this earth? What are you here to do and who are you here to serve? And then how can each other in that circle motivate you? So I have had mentors along the way. I've had people in my family that have been uh, deans and professors and vice presidents that I have looked up to since I was a little girl. Um, and they are a part of my circle. And then I have my one mentor that um, to me, she was like the quintessential mentor to me because when I met her, she had an infectious personality. She was very warm and welcoming but she was one of the top vice chancellors in the California higher education system. And she was, uh, she is uh, married 30, 30 plus years, successful marriage, three grown adult children. And when I met her, they were still in middle and high school. And so I say, you know, she is one of my um, angels, um, my aces in the circle that keep me going. Uh, and that's the person that you can rely on when you just need advice. And I also have my very best friend. Um, we have very similar paths. She's in the K-12 side and I'm in the higher ed side. And so she always tells me the adage that you've heard before. Um, eagles soar high. Eagles soar above. Eagles keep themselves focused on the ultimate goal. Chickens may scurry around um, in the field in the dirt. And so if we're going to be eagle minded people, we have to rise with the eagles. We cannot have chicken mentality. Wow. It's so it's all right. If you just mentioned uh, the eagles and the chicken. Pastor T.D. Jakes has a speech on eagles. I, I Google T.D. Jakes and eagles and you will see um, how he talks about how eagles, they elevate to levels that other people aren't able to other birds aren't able to reach. Yeah. And you want to separate yourself from the chickens and the pigeons. You want to rise and elevate to an eagle. So thank you for that. Right. Y'all, you're an average of the people that you hang around. If, if the, the people in your circle, if they don't inspire you, if they don't motivate you, you don't have a circle. Instead, you have a cage. So thank you for sharing that, Dr. Watson. Um, yes. After we fill in our corners, you see we have an entire side of the Rubik's Cube solved. Um, that's a solid foundation. I think um, with, with the belief, with your why, and um, you knowing what kind of environment to immerse yourself in, those are key points that can lead to your, that can put you on a path of success. So step four of solving the Rubik's Cube, step four of solving life is to take it to the next level. Now, taking it to the next level simply means to continue to grow, to continue to get better. Never get content with where you are in life. If you climb the mountain and if you planted your flag at the peak of your mountain, it's time to climb a new mountain. There's never a level of I'm good and I've made it. So, Dr. Watson, what recommendations would you offer to the people who are watching on continuing to grow and continuing to get better? Well, I would say, you know, one of the things that you have to do that's a that is a tough one for me because when i was in when i was about your age derek i was early on in my higher ed career and the university i worked with at the time did a front page news story um assistant professor sees herself as a president college president in 10 years and at the time i didn't have children um my husband and i were first married and so that was like I was never going to be content until I pushed to that level. But now I'm at a time, you know, coming up on my mid 40th year and saying, you know, I'm not in a feeling of contentment. And that's where I want the listeners and those who watch this afterwards. 
you, you don't get in a feeling of contentment, but you do get in a feeling of your fulfilled purpose. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in your young 20s and young 30s, you're pushing, you're driving, you're like on to the next. I put my flag in this mountain. I'm going to the next one. But there is a point in your life where there's a time of rest where mm -hmm. you're saying, I'm resting in my purpose right now. Um, and that just so happens to be where I am. And so I want everyone to know you are going to set out a plan. And I always say, um, the Bible says, write the vision, make it plain, write it on the tablets of your heart. Um, I tell a funny story about when my husband and I were dating, he didn't have a 10 year plan. And I was like, I'm not walking down the aisle until you have a 10 year plan. Uh, so you have to write your vision. You have to know what you intend to do. I, I know that I've written it down, but I also am very, very confident in that time of rest. And when you're at that time, it's not complacency, but it's really mapping out what am I adding to this um, space right now? How are the people that are in my corners impacted? How are the people that are at the cross impacted? And how are the people believing in that first foundational step, the belief that they can make it to the next level? And so when I say to a younger viewer or someone that is early in their career, um, push forward, yes, push forward. Um, but set benchmarks that you can accomplish, that you're not tiring yourself out to get to that level, but you're actually resting in what you have been granted, this purpose that, you're been, that you've been granted in your life. How are you resting in that? But then how are you adding value? When you feel like you have done all that you can in that particular place, then you feel a natural progression to the next level. And that's how life works. I didn't know that 20 years ago, Derek. I really didn't. Um, now that I look back in retrospect, it's like hindsight is 2020. There's not a need to rush. There is a need to be excellent in everything you do. Every article that you write, every book chapter, every presentation, um, every opportunity you have to lead, lead in with excellence, but also know that you are in a place of rest at some points in your life and you can't rush through that because it's an authentic time that you're supposed to be granted. Mm, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. I thank you for, you know, you know, changing that narrative for me personally. When you get to a level and you're supposed to be in a place where you are, serve, rest in your, in your servitude in that level, you can't be the best college of education, um, the dean of college of education, if you uh, had your sights planned on other opportunities and exactly. other, other whereabouts. So you, you, you have to be fully immersed and where you are. Thank you for that, Dr. Wise. Thank you for that. Dr. Kendra Mitchell, come on. She's she preaching. She's preaching. Come on. You hey, a, Dr. Mitchell. You got another PhD candidate. Uh, evening to you, too. Um, Miss Margaret Blake says, great advice. We got a uh, we got Jesse. Uh, there is not a need to rush, but there's a need to always display excellence. Quoted by Dr. Allison Watson. Yes, sir. We got Brandon Moten. Uh, congratulations. He just earned his PhD at FAMU. Um, awesome. Proud of uh, period of rest. I like that. For those of y'all who's watching, um, I think I think it's very important that we pick the brains of wise people. And we have somebody who uh, has, has a lot of wisdom to offer. So if you have any comments, you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. And Dr. Watson would be more than happy to address your question. Um, and everybody that's in the doctoral cohort, they can't rest yet. They have to get through the doctoral cohort and I'll see them at graduation when they get hooded. And then when they move into that next level, I'm sure there's going to be a period. It, and it's a beautiful thing. I have always been driven, Derek. I've, I received my PhD at the age of 25, had my first, the first endowed chair at the university that I was hired at um, by the age of 32. Um, and so I know what it's like to have drive and to push forward um, at a very fast pace. But I also know the beauty in once you get to what you're accomplishing and you feel a contentment in your heart um, at that moment, it's no better feeling in the world, no mm -hmm. greater feeling in the world. And I like what you said about I can't be in the College of Education and we're doing remarkable things together if my eye is set on the next level. And, and I am so committed to the College of Education um, at FAMU that we are going to be the ultimate best. That I, that's what I'm thinking about. That's what I go to sleep, wake up thinking about um, how we're going to take it to the next level. And it excites me. 
I, I remember when you, when you were first introduced as a dean of college on um, college of education, you gave a speech and you spoke on your goals. Um, and I was inspired. I, I was fired. I was like, we have to, we have to really make her proud. We have to really honor her because, um, you know, we have their leadership. Your, 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 um, the people under your leadership, they definitely want to do that job and and, and making and making you proud and honoring. They you. are. They work so hard. Hi, Dr. Shakir. Yeah, Dr. Shakir has been a phenomenal in uh, pubbing this uh, today's episode, today's interview on Solving Sunday. She's phenomenal. Uh, I, I had she the opportunity is. to walk past her office before she moved to the College of Education, and she was always a. Uh, it's, it's it's something about the environment at, at FAMU. It's a, they promote they promote success. They promote progression. If you're not if you're not living up to your potential. You know, we have professors that are take off their time. They'll take off the doc, the Dr. Watson role and say, now this is Allison talking to you. Yeah. This is you some stuff together. And that's the thing about FAMU. It's not a it's a true commitment to the progression of the students that come through FAMU. Um, it's not a teacher relationship, it's a mentor relationship, a woman mentor relationship. And people generally, right. generally are invested in our growth and our prosperity. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. We have um we have Mr. Jesse, let me get to it. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. Said, and that's the thing, Derek. When, when, when I see you all, when you're, when you all put your prospectus together for your dissertation, when you are um, preparing to defend, when you're working with your committee, you're not just carrying on the mantle for your family and for your own legacy. You really represent me. You represent. Um, your families, you represent all that you stand for, and you represent our ancestors. Think about where we have come um, that so many before us could only wish and dream of. And now we're here. Yep, yep. I think about that all the time. Um, I think, you know, the resources that we have, uh, we have access to smartphones. We have unlimited access to all the uh, all the Google. And so, you know, all these access to knowledge uh, that we can acquire knowledge. And I think about if we had the same commitment to learning that our ancestors had, that I, you know, that our forefathers and our foremothers had, what, how, how will we honor the legacy? How will we honor their their work and their commitments and making sure that we have the opportunity? They gave us the opportunity. Now we must take advantage of the opportunity. So that's right. We have, I have some comments. They're not showing. Okay, Miss uh, Margaret, I'm joining the fall 2022 cohort. Super excited to be under a leader as dedicated as you, uh, Margaret. Miss yes. Blake. She, her master's degree, early childhood education at Florida State University. And I've been telling her, you need to come on across, come on, come on across yes. the family. We'll you, we man. welcome we you, Miss Blake. We got Dr. Terrence McNeil. He has, he's a new oh, researcher. Dr. McNeil. Hey, awesome, awesome. I've known Dr. McNeil for many, many years, and he has just always been a representation of excellence um, in education. So I'm really proud of him at Tennessee State. Turn, yes, ma'am. He's doing a phenomenal thing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, Miss Blake, Miss Doctor Shakir is welcoming you to the College of Education. She definitely, she would definitely yes. um, serve as a woman mentor to you, good ma'am. Make sure you get situated. Um, Jesse Doja, I started at Capella University in 2018 and got held up because of finances. Recently, I started at American College of Education. There was a period where I felt defeated because I had to switch. But I had to remember that I have to keep going. This dialogue is so inspiring. Thank you for that yes. feedback. Thank keep that going. Feedback. Don't give up. Um, Dr. McNeil, go Rattlers. Greetings from TSU. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. McNeil, thank you for tuning in, good sir. We we'll definitely have to get you on um, get you on Solve Sundays one of these days. Um, so after we believe in ourselves, after we fill in our corners, solve our cross, and take it to the next level, that brings us to step number five of solving the Rubik's Cube. And the fifth step of solving life is to see the bigger picture. Now, seeing the bigger picture simply means to keep your commitment to your commitments. When you set a goal, you have to see your goal through through fruition. A lot of times we get sidetracked by frivolous activities, um, yeah. you know, things that we truly don't want. But how how have you kept your commitment to your commitments? And what advice would you offer to people who are on a path? And um, how do they stay the course of the path and see it through? Oh, that's like a life core value for me, Derek. I truly believe that when you commit to something, you do it all the way or you don't do it at all. That's what my kids have to hear all the time. Those around me, um, I would give the advice that it's not always going to be easy. Um, there are going to be bumps in the road, uh, things that are least expected and things that you kind of saw brewing um, that happen to come about. But I would say that you have to keep your eyes focused on the end in mind. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and remember, if you tuned in when we first started, I said, how is it that you can add value to your own life um, in what you're doing and that you can add value in others? Um, and somebody asked me on a recent panel that I was was serving on, how, how what do you do if you if you feel like you say yes to things too much and you don't say no? And I said, the first thing I do is follow peace. If you are walking in, what is your purpose, your plan? I always talk about the three P's. What is your plan for your life? What is your purpose and how you're going to get there? And then how does your plan and your purpose match your passion? Mm -hmm. And so from day one, even though I did not choose education originally, I always knew that I had a purpose and a passion to work with education, um, those around me, motivation, um, working through learning. And so I followed those three P's and that led me to always considering my commitment and being consistent with my commitment. Mm -hmm. A value trait that I hold true is consistency. Um, if you knew me when I was three, four, five years old and you know me now, you know I'm the same person, I'm just a grown up but I've always um, pretty much been a consistent person. I'm always pretty much happy. I'm always going to see how I can motivate those around me. And even when I have bad days, there's going to be some time where I can turn it around and say, okay, but here's the positive side of things. So you have to write your commitment down. What are you committed to? Being a better father, being a better mother, being a better spouse, um, being more diligent in your, um, if you're a doctoral student, be more diligent in your reading. Those lit reviews don't write themselves. So if you want to get your PhD, you want to finish that next goal, how are you going to commit to taking time and setting it aside to writing? One of the things that I do is try to continue to stay relevant with my research. So I have a book chapter coming up. And what I'll do is I will put reminders in my calendar. You need to have your abstract written by this date. You need to have your next portion written by this day. Here's the deadline. And I put it in red. I categorize it as red so that that commitment rings true in my calendar and I get reminders of it. And that's the same thing when you commit to something in life, whether it's making sure that you have a clean car or is making sure that you have self-care, time for self-care or something major like making sure that you complete this PhD by this time with excellence, it's not something that you threw together, but you work with your committee diligently, then you have to put in little benchmarks for yourself to say, I'm staying the course. I'm not going to look from side to side. I'm not going to waver. We're going to get to this ultimate commitment um, come hell or high water. And that's one of the things that you have to realize there is going to be a positive breakthrough at the end, but there will be times that you have to jump over obstacles and hurdles, but you'll get there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I think keeping your commitments is um, a muscle that you definitely need to uh, strengthen on a on a daily basis. And right now I'm in the uh, we've taken comps and we're, we're preparing to defend proposals and the co commitment level of writing every day is the one of those muscles that you have to just continue to develop. And now we've, I, we've pocketed times. As soon as I wake up, I eat the frog. The first thing we're doing is writing. First thing we're doing when we wake up. Is writing now keeping that commitment to that is a little difficult, but we we making sure we, we we're working on being consistent with it. That's the only way we're gonna make it through. Ask yourself a question every day: Are you doing yeah. today what you would do to uh, to finish this dissertation, to finish this program, and get through it? So yeah, you have to find ways to to stay committed to the process and stay committed to the course. Um, we have Doctor Reginald Ellis. He's tuned in. He says Dr. Dean Watson Ellis. is a teacher and leader. Keep leading the way through Rattlers. Yes, sir. I one of the things about I mentioned this earlier, but FAMU is such a close knit um, community where people support people. You come in, we're going to take you under our wings and we're going to support and we're going to promote and we're going to uh, provide advice. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be a part it of the FAMU. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We got Miss um, Blake. She's a she's a, actually I recruited her to come to college of education. What she's doing with young people is absolutely phenomenal. And I've been telling her she needs to come to family. We would definitely take her under our arms. But she's a part of a writing session. Um, we've been working on getting up at 4 30 and writing in the mornings. So definitely uh, that wanna, is, wanna, that's commitment. That is commitment for sure. Just like yeah. you have to work out your physical muscles, you have to work out your your brain muscles. It takes 21 days to develop a habit, good or bad. 
So you mm. put forth that commitment in 21 days and it becomes like natural science to you. you you're just, you're automatically doing it. Can you hear me, Derek? I am still here. Just want to tell everyone to um, thank you for tuning in to Solve It Sundays with me and Derek Sandifer, who I am super proud of. And I'm so excited that I was able to be here today. I've always admired his ability to work the Rubik's Cube and um, with the five step process. Derek, you're back now. I was just ad libbing. <laughs> We had some. We, I had some two G networks for a hot second. <laughs> That's okay. I, thank you for thank you for you see true leadership. They can adapt. Um, they can adapt on the dime. So thank you for picking up and jumping in. We appreciate that, Doctor Watson. Yeah, you got to be no flexible. problem. <laughs> we got a uh, Doctor Doctor Terrence Benil. He tunes back in. Says uh, dedication. Doctor Hope says I'll take that over anything you. I'll take that over anything you got. Dedication. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Nip, Nip, Nipsey Hustle, the great philosopher, Nipsey Hustle, uh, dedication, yes. dedication, be committed to the process. Um, Dr. Watson, from the top of my heart to the bottom of my soul, <laughs> it broke up again, Derek, but I just want to say I'm so, so thankful and blessed to be here uh, with you and your guests. I think you're doing amazing things. The fact that you are a wonderful dad. Um, taking your kids just through leadership processes, actually, and being involved in the community um, means the world to me. So I appreciate all that you've done. Everyone, thanks for tuning in to Solve It Sundays uh, so that you can learn the five steps to solving life's problems just like you would a Rubik's Cube. It's been a pleasure to be with you all today. I appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing you in the College of Education and having your support. Please look at us at www.famu.edu forward slash education. And we'll see soon when we do our 1887 strikes campaign, March 25th and 26th, where we are setting a goal to raise $5,000 to increase the number of males in education um, through scholarships and to, out, to um, fill our STEM lab, which is in the first floor of the College of Education. I appreciate you all. And thank you, Derek. You're back. I just closed this out. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Watson, from the top of my heart to the bottom of my soul, thank you for agreeing to do the interview. I do apologize about the technical difficulties. That's uh, okay. Dr. Margaret, she said, I'm coming back over across the tracks. There is no way that I get the love and encouragement from FSU that I would at the family. <laughs> thank you for speaking. This is Dr. Watson. I'll see you in August. Dr. Future Jones says, uh, thank you, Dean Watson. And Dr. Terrence McNeil says, excellent. Um, I appreciate it. Dr. Watson, you say travels back to Tallahassee. You be great. Thank like, you. Be blessed like a sneeze. And those of y'all who's watching, thank y'all for tuning in um, and asking your questions and your comments for Dr. Watson. Y'all be great. Enjoy your weekend. And we will see y'all next Sunday on Solve the Sunday. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Well, Kiss the kids for me, Derek. I, you see they kept coming into the door. The I know. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.